Hafide, Guam, Adriana Cotero here, and we are joined with the uh, Guam Department of Education Deputy Superintendent, Mr. Joe Sanchez. Hi, Joe. How are you? Hi, Hafide, Adriana. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. So, um, you. you know, I know there's been a lot of discussions, um, and as of right now, there's a lot of proposals out there in regards to what will happen if school is closed. Um, does have to close and what we're doing in the meantime. So if we could just talk about that and break it down for the most part, but as of right now, you guys have launched a website just today. So we'll start with that, that this website is open to um, students and they can start utilizing it. And then beginning on Monday, April 6th, educators will start doing lesson plans on there as well. Correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. So yeah, so what, what we've been doing over the past uh, week and a half or two weeks now is we've we've pulled together teams of administrators, teachers, um, you know, instructional staff, and, and even some student leaders. And we had to discuss two, two scenarios. One scenario was, you know, what happens if we were to open school at a particular time? And the second one, which is the harder one to discuss, was what would happen if we needed to close school completely? And we felt that it was important for us to have those two discussions because, number one, there's a lot of districts and, and, and states in the country that have already made the decision to close schools down for the rest of the school year. We have not made that decision yet. You know, so uh, we wanted to be prepared um, to, you know, in, in the event of one of those two scenarios. Now, the first one is if we do open school, like, for example, I think it's you know, in mid-April, if we do go back to right. school or even if it's extended, if we if we were to be in that situation, we felt that that's that would be the easier of the two scenarios because we already have a system in place where the teachers can adjust their curriculum. We can reprioritize particular content. We've already come to an understanding that if we do return to school, the intent is not to try to cram or make up all of the time that was missed. So, for example, if we missed a miss a month of school, the intent is to not to try to cram that month into the remaining days. That just wouldn't be effective. It wouldn't make a lot of sense with regards to actual learning. So the teachers, through their what are called professional learning communities, will work with their colleagues to ensure that the content is tailored down, reprioritized, and reasonable for the amount of time that that we have left. You know, so if we have two, three weeks, you know, left, what can be covered during that time, and grading and and whatnot will be addressed with those that with the particular work that's provided there. Now, the second scenario is a little, it was a little bit more tough is what happens if we were to close schools down right now. So I do want to point out that these working groups that we've had a little over 10 working sessions uh, on Zoom uh, video conferencing with the different groups, and we didn't entertain whether or not we should close. We just entertained the question of what would happen if we did. So that's, I just, I just want to clarify that point. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, what we did is we decided that we, it all to be fair and equitable to all students is we would separate the grading policy from the distance online learning. So the idea was the online learning resources that we would provide and the online supports would not necessarily be used for grading the students. We have too many students. We have a substantial number who do not have regular access to the internet, regular access to devices. They don't have regular transportation. And, and even at that, we don't know if the, the, the current structure at home is going to be conducive to learning. And that, in addition to the stress that we know families are already experiencing, and it's not just stress caused by, you know, worrying about their health, but, you know, there's, there's an economic impact. You know, some of these families are not, you know, generating income and, and, and you know, it's, it's, we don't want to add to all of that stress. And that would have made it very inequitable in terms of, uh, you know, grading students during this period if we were to provide online online access. So we have a separate grading policy that we are going to um, propose to the board that they will consider. It, it basically covers uh, utilizing existing grades, which is, you know, the So the research. third, the third quarter so grades would stay where they're at right now. Yep. So that's our, that's our proposal. And thank you for, for emphasizing that it's a proposal because we feel that that is the most current the most accurate grade that is, uh, you know, basically uh, uh, what was generated from the student and, and the teacher because we completed a uh, third quarter. Now for the high school students, uh, the grading policy is especially consequential because it deals with three additional factors that kinder through eighth grade don't deal with. Number one, it deals with graduation. So these challenges impact graduation. 
you want to make sure that that was that was addressed too. It impacts credit earning. Mm -hmm. So even if a student was not graduating this year, we have such a tight credit requirement where students take six credits per year, and they're required to have 24 credits in order to graduate. So in order for a student to graduate without having to go to summer school or night school, they would have to make sure they earn all of their credits every school year. So we wanted to make sure that that was uh, paid attention to. And then lastly, in the high schools, we have to worry about ranking. We, we know that, you know, and ranking does only apply to the top 10 for their senior year. We know that that the, the pool of individuals who could potentially be be top 10 and, and you know avail of scholarships and whatnot, mm -hmm. that starts as early as that starts as early as freshman year. So we know that you know we have to make sure that the grading policy has to be fair and equitable because it affects freshmen all the way up to you know four years later when they graduate from high school. I was gonna say so about that, that kind of goes hand in hand a little bit with AP classes, right? And receiving credits then. Yes, absolutely. So for high school, the proposal that we have is one is, if, uh, you know, their quarter grade will stand as, the, as their semester grade. But if a student is failing a class, we believe we should give them the benefit of the doubt and they will get a 60. They will get a blanket 60. So at the very least, we would give them the credit for that particular class. Now, in addition to that, with the third quarter grade, for students who are taking AP classes or honors classes, we would give them the additional 10%. So uh, what happens in a regular um, honors or AP class is whatever grade you get, you get 10% added to that uh, because it's an, it's an honors class. And, and uh, except unless they failed it. So in, in the case of the AP honors classes, if, if the students got a, a failing grade, uh, they would just avail of the 60% and they wouldn't get the additional 10% that honors and AP students get. And now the last piece to that is uh, service learning. So that's a big question on a lot of uh, uh, parents and students' minds is, is what to do with service learning. Mm -hmm. So the proposal is if you're a graduating senior or you're expected to graduate this year, our intent is to request uh, through the superintendent and the board to waive those service learning requirements. Now, uh, at, the, at the superintendent's level and the board level, they are working on who would be the appropriate entity to request that from. Well, we believe it's a you know, combination of either the legislature or the governor uh, you know, so they're they're taking it from from that piece, but you know, from our end is we're making that request to waive the service learning hours uh, for students who are expected to graduate this year. So just to uh, clarify, there would be two separate repo these proposals. High school would have its entire own, different from elementary, then right and middle. Yeah. So okay. so kinder kinder through eighth grade are uh, similar to high school, except that it just stops at they get the they get the third uh on the third quarter grade. So it wouldn't round up. Uh, no, it, it, they, wouldn't, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't have to get the 60%. If there was a failing grade, it would be a failing grade. Uh, if it's whatever, if it was a passing grade, they would get that grade. But um, for th those grades, we want to clarify that the intent is students will not be uh, held back. So if they're a second grade student, they would move on to the third grade. If they're a fifth grade student, they would move on to middle school. If they're an eighth grade student, you will move on to high school. So you won't be penalized for that unless there is already some process in place, either a child study team or some other process in place where the parents and the and the school were already in conversation about the possibility of their, their child being held back. But that's done on a case-by-case -case basis and the schools already know who those students are. Now, I know it, it can be kind of difficult to predict right now, but uh, what, are, what are the odds of closing school for the remaining of the school year? You know, that, that, that's really hard to say. I mean, all, all we're going off really right now is what uh, what's happening in the mainland and what's happening even just as close as CNMI. CNMI made the decision to to close mm -hmm. schools already. So, uh, yeah, I wouldn't really have any uh, uh, additional information to for us to make that decision. I'm just, we're just looking at trends right now. If school does close, I know a, something that we've heard just from the community and a big question is graduation. Will graduation still occur? So what we've uh, what we've done, and we've already been engaged with the high schools, and the high schools have already been engaged with their class councils, and in some cases they've already had some meetings with their uh, the, the graduating seniors. But we've separated the process into two uh, big discussions. The first discussion is how do we make sure that graduation, uh, the diplomas and the transcripts are correct, because that's always like a big part. Is you want to make sure whoever's supposed to graduate graduates, whoever's supposed to have the credits. And as you know, high school, high schools every year, the last three to even the month 
before graduation, they're constantly updating their graduation list because students are bringing in credit from other, you know, other credit recovery programs like the Smooth Dow and um, it's called, you know, that's called school employee. Uh, also, they have to make sure that the counts are correct, like in terms of not the, just the number of credits, but the type of credit students earn. So the counselors are already engaged in that process. Now that, that discussion is separate from the graduation ceremony. The graduation ceremony is technically not legally required for a student to graduate, but we know that it's something that's very special mm -hmm. in every single student's heart, you know? So uh, that's why we're very, very sensitive to um, speaking to the students about this. And we're, we're really just being upfront with them that, you know, most likely if school closes, then there would have been a justification to not have us convene in large groups. Like obviously that would be the main reason why schools are closed. And if that's the case, then most likely that would mean that there would be no high school graduation ceremony. So they've already started discussing what are some options for them to, uh, you know, celebrate the event and, and mm -hmm. utilize some of the funds that they've had. You know, they've talked about, you know, a video graduation, you know, like a, like a uh, uh, ceremony, you know, uh, 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 if, you know, event, you know, showing, showing different types of activities throughout the year, mm -hmm. uh, a booklet of some kind. Uh, they've even asked maybe they can have uh, a ceremony later on in the year uh, or something like a, a one-year reunion where they can, they can celebrate then. Yeah. So right now that's, that's being discussed at the school level. But, you but know, we if did, school does we were, close. We were up front with them. But if school, if it is determined that school is closing, then no graduation. That's that's the likelihood because you know obviously there would have to be justification for the schools to close to begin with to be closed to begin with and I think it would it would be the same idea. Now, when you guys were presenting these um, different proposals to the PTO earlier today, I heard one of the different uh, parent teacher leaders say that um, if there was a possibility of expanding the summer program, if that could also be a potential, uh, I guess, a potential proposal as well. Yes, absolutely. So, you know, we don't we don't necessarily know when this whole crisis is going to end. But what we want to what we what we're trying to prepare for is when it does end, we're able to go back to work full speed, meaning all of the initiatives and all of the work that we've had, we want to be able to pick up uh, as quickly as possible. And summer school is definitely a big event that happens, you know, over the over the summertime. So we do want to see if um, we can at least prepare for a larger population of students who might want to uh, participate. I mean, you know, uh, I, I, think at, I think at some point, all those students may like staying at home. At some point, they're gonna wanna go back to school and they're gonna, they're gonna be bored. So, you know, if, if, if summer comes around, there's, there's, we're expecting a larger number of students who might wanna participate. Uh, it may not only be at-risk students, because right now our summer school program and our night school program is focused mainly on the at-risk students, but we suspect that there may be a number of students who are not at risk who also want to go to go to summer school um also we're thinking that we might get more teachers because one of our challenges over this for summer uh, is that uh, we don't have all, a lot of teachers on island so you know not all of them uh, or not all of them want to work over the summer so we're thinking we might get a larger uh, number of teachers who might also want to teach and if, if that if that were the case we'd, we'd probably be able to expand it uh this summer is is there any way um that it would be mandatory that everyone does have to participate in the summer school program. So that would mean no summer break. So I know, I know there was a discussion or at least uh, someone brought up the question about whether or not we're going to make up the days during summer. And, uh, you know, one of the things that we've proposed is that these be days that are just not made up. I mean, if you try to go with the current 180 day plan, we are, we're either going to, really go into the summer or really have to extend the day. So I know there's been no uh, definitive response to to that, but um, yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't know of any plan right now to make up the days during summer. Okay. So with that said, yeah, with, with that said, even if it's not required, we still want to do the expansion because um, we're thinking along two lines. Um, I, I know that we don't want to think too positive about these things, but there is a bright side to kind of some of the things that we are experiencing and it's pushing the need and desire and at least awareness of online learning, distance education mm -hmm. and alternative education. And we, we intend to invest in a, in a larger uh, number of uh, uh, computer, computer carts, computer labs, not just for the schools, but we're hoping to be able to put some of these labs in the community 
uh, inclusive of uh, internet access because uh, you know, we, we know that there's still a percentage of students who, again, like I said, don't have access to the internet, don't have access to computers, which really puts them behind when it comes to, you know, the real world and, and the economics of, of today. I mean, you know, even now with uh, the shutdown, you know, all of us are working, you know, uh, from home and, and through technology and whatnot. So students mm -hmm. need to be able to have these skills to function in this type of environment. Mm -hmm. So with our mm -hmm. startup program, we think that that would be a perfect time to kind of test it out. So we want to test a couple of distance learning options, online courses, uh, and then, uh, you know, so on some face to face. So, you know, it's, uh, it, does, it does potentially give us an opportunity to test out some of these things uh, before the new year starts. Mm -hmm. And if anything, it almost prepares them for college, right? Because they're all, a lot of it's online. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, let's just highlight on that, the new website that you guys launched um, as of today. How is it thus far? I know it's still early on and it's just starting, but um, are, are, you, are you able to, do you have any, are you able to see how many people are getting on or have there been a lot of people asking questions about it? So right now, so I don't, I don't know what the, the, uh, if, if it collects that kind of data of people who, who are able to log on, but I do know that we're getting feedback from a lot of folks about, you know, oh, they like it, they're using it and whatnot. And it's really simple because what we wanted to do is we wanted to uh, use it as mainly a communications tool where parents can access some of these online resources, you know, and, and there's really so many things that are on, on the internet that they can use. So what we wanted to do is make sure that we vetted you know, the, the, the website. So we're not just taking websites that people send and saying, here, try this out. You know, it's not as simple as just forwarding it on a chat. It's we really have staff who are looking through it, making sure that it's appropriate, making sure that um, uh, it's a, it's a of high quality, you know, so it's not just junk that we're, we're recommending. And most importantly, and, and don't laugh at this, but you know, it's free. We wanna make sure that it's free. Now, some of these websites do have a paid option where they can upgrade and, and you know use more services if they wanted to pay a fee. But generally, you can still go on and, and, and students can do it without and use it without uh, having to pay any, uh, you know, with, uh, any fee to, to use it. Uh, so that's kind of the first level. The second level is the resources that the teachers and the schools are going to be providing in particular. So in the elementary schools, we've decided to do weekly lessons. So we're doing weekly lessons in literacy, math, and character education slash life skills. And when we put those out, we, we're, we're gonna put the lessons out, we're gonna put the resources out, and we've designed it in a way, or the teachers have designed it in a way where the parent can do those lessons throughout the week. We asked them, and, and, I, and I've already seen a lot of samples, they're not just busy work, so they're not just worksheets that the kids sit down and have to do a worksheet, but we're asking them to do projects around the house, we're asking them to no. do projects with their families, so they can actually apply the skills that they're learning in the in the in the classroom, and of course, like I said earlier, this these are all projects and, and activities that are not going to be graded, right? I was going to so, say so. Uh, even whenever, so come April sixth, whenever educators start doing the weekly um, lessons, those aren't graded then. They're not going to be graded, so it's basically just enrichment. Now, the, the the families can reach out to the teachers for feedback because they they might want some feedback, uh, but those will not be counted or at least our proposal is that they won't be counted uh, towards the grades. For the middle schools, uh, same thing, is that the, the, the only difference is the middle schools have really taken uh, ownership of their own websites. So their own websites will be providing uh, a lot of the content and resources for their students. So when you go to our website, there's some middle school stuff that will be done centrally, but then there's also links to all the middle schools uh, to get their resources. High schools, as you probably know, the high schools, we focused a lot on the grading part because it's huge when it comes to high school. So we really had to focus on that particular policy first. And then now, um, you know, students can actually reach out to their teachers if they wanted special assistance in, the, in content areas. So we're thinking in particular high school uh, seniors who are graduating. So for example, some students who are going off to college and they have a particular major and they need help with the course that they were taking. Um, they don't necessarily have to worry about the grade and reach out to their teacher to give them guidance on, you know, something in math or something in, in the sciences. And the same thing goes for uh, uh, earlier uh, underclassmen who uh, want to prepare for next school year. So right now it's really just reaching out to the teacher and getting that, that guidance. 
I was going to say, I was going to ask, is it pretty open? Like, let's say that there is someone that's in, I don't know, seventh grade, but they want to see what the curriculum is a bit in 10th grade or something. Can they go and do some research or even do some of those different, um, I guess, the different lesson plans? So the high schools don't have the lesson plan set up yet. So it's not, oh. it's not so much that it's not the same as the elementary schools. Right now, it's really just the uh, teachers are available for their current students who need additional assistance in the courses that they're currently taking. Uh, what we are doing, and we haven't set this up yet, uh, is uh, we're going to be working with some high school teams to also do the literacy, potentially mm -hmm. math, and the career, career education and life skills piece. So the intent is to have the same centralized uh, uh, supports uh, from all of the different high schools. But most of the most of the communication will be directly with the, the particular teachers of those courses. Okay. All right. So um, anything else you want to add? So we know schools closed as of right now till April 13th. And then um, if that is extended, I'm sure we'll be hearing an announcement forthcoming from GDOE. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I guess I just want to thank all the families and parents out there, uh, you know, and of course our, our students for, uh, you know, being patient with us. I know that there's uh, there were a lot of questions, but you know, the unfortunate thing is, is, uh, you know, this was a, a crisis that uh, you know, just kind of came up and it was very important for us to to really get a lot of stakeholders involved uh, and be very diligent to approach things. Uh, and again, you know, uh, we're prepared for whatever scenario comes up. If we're prepared for uh, what would happen if school were to open and if, what would happen if schools were to were to actually stay closed. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And that website um, for people to start utilizing, is, they can just go straight to the GDOE site, right? And it's on there? Yeah. So if you go to the, the regular DOE site, the www.gdoe.net, you click on that, uh, it's up on the left hand, you know, upper upper left hand. I think it's home, home, resource, uh, home resource page or home learning resource page. Uh, and you can click there. All right. Well, thank you so much, Joe. Thank you, too. Yeah, thank All right, you. take care. Stay safe. Yeah, you too. And thank you all for tuning in. Again, that was GDOE Deputy Superintendent Joe Sanchez. He uh, described a few of the different proposals that have been discussed amongst the different PTO leaders. And nothing is set in stone yet as far as school closures. And once there is an announcement, make sure you stay up to date with us.